Good morning, everyone. I'm so happy to see you again. It's Monday, and we have a big cooking day ahead of us. I want to make my version of English muffins. Plus, Mr. Fox has asked me to make another one of those baked oatmeal casseroles, which he really loves. He has also asked me to make some more of the bacon and egg freezer meals that he can have for easy breakfast. And the first thing we are going to do is the English muffins. In a large bowl, add one cup or 240 mils of warm water, a half cup or 120 mils of warm milk, and two and a quarter teaspoons or seven grams of active dry yeast. I bought this yeast in 2021 and put it in the freezer. It's still viable. It's two years old. Use a whisk to combine the ingredients. Now I'm adding two and a half cups or 340 grams of all-purpose or plain flour. Stir this mixture about 100 times to develop the gluten. This is like making a pancake batter. Really easy to do. I like to stir in one direction, just as a standing mixer with a dough hook would do. Okay, so that was 100 revolutions with this spoon. And as you can see, the gluten is already developing. Now cover the bowl with either cling film or with a damp towel, and then put this in a warm location until the batter doubles in volume and becomes very bubbly. That's going to take about an hour and a half, 19 minutes. While we are waiting on the English muffin batter, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the baked oatmeal. Beat five large eggs in a large mixing bowl. Whisk in three quarters of a cup or 188 grams of plain applesauce. Also beat in one cup or 285 grams of plain Greek yogurt. Then whisk in one cup or 236 mils of whole milk, two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract, and a half cup or 118 mils of local honey. I'm using local buckwheat honey here. Now pour on six cups or 510 grams of old fashioned oats. Sprinkle three teaspoons of baking soda and one teaspoon of salt over the oats. Then stir them in. To add another layer of flavor, I like to add some ground cinnamon. About that much. Oh, cinnamon smells wonderful. There goes my oven, which has preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. Now I need to grab some blueberries. I'm adding frozen blueberries because the blueberries in my garden are not quite ready yet. I usually add one to two cups. And just fold them in. Pour the mixture into a greased 9 by 13 baking dish. Spread it out. I'm going to pop this into the preheated oven until the baked oatmeal is golden on top and set in the middle. That's going to take about 50 minutes to one hour. While the oatmeal casserole is baking in the oven, I'm going to go ahead and start on the breakfast freezer meals that Mr. Fox loves. So I need a dozen eggs, 
using a lot of eggs this morning. I'm so glad the cost of eggs has come down. These eggs are large, local, and organic. The great thing about meal prep like this is that you just take two or three hours out of your day to create a week's worth of food. I'm going to use my favorite egg beating whisk. I will link this in the description below. A bit of salt. Fresh grinds of black pepper. That's really all we need. Let's move over to the stove top. So I had my Le Creuset soup pot over medium low heat. Adding three tablespoons of butter. Now remember, the trick to really good scrambled eggs is to cook them low and slow. And I'm going to whisk this very slowly until the eggs coagulate. Look at this, creamy and beautiful. I'm going to turn off the heat and we are good. For each freezer breakfast, I am adding a buckwheat pancake that we made in last week's video. And here are the scrambled eggs, plus some bacon that was previously cooked and frozen. A little pat of butter for the pancake. Wait, when Mr. Fox puts this in the microwave, the butter will melt and that pancake will be shimmering. And there we are, four freezer breakfasts from Mr. Fox. Let's check on the English muffin batter. And again, this is just my own version of English muffins. As you can see, it's very bubbly. All of these bubbles are going to create the nooks and crannies in the muffins. If you look carefully, you will see that the mixture is actively bubbling. It is alive. The only thing I have to do is add some salt, and I need to dissolve that salt first. Dissolve one and a half teaspoons of salt in three tablespoons of warm water. Add the salt. Stir 25 times in the same direction. These are strands of gluten. Then cover the bowl as before and let this rest until the batter doubles again and becomes bubbly. That's going to take about 30 minutes this time. I know we are bouncing all over the place this morning, but that's just how food prep works. My baked oatmeal is ready. Gorgeous. This really puffed up. It smells terrific because of the cinnamon and the honey and the blueberries. I'm going to let this come to room temperature, and then I will cut it into squares and put the squares in an airtight container. My English muffin batter is nice and bubbly once again. So I am going to bake these muffins in my electric skillet. You, of course, could use a skillet on the stovetop. And I have this heated to 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 degrees Celsius. Now, I will be scooping the batter into these English muffin rings. These measure three and a half inches in diameter, and they are one and a quarter inches deep. They are just perfect for these muffins. I'm going to put six of them in my skillet. And if I can find these rings on Amazon, I will link them in the description below. I am using vegetable spray to grease the interior of each ring. And you want to take care not to overfill the rings. I only fill mine halfway. Then cover the skillet and let the muffins bake for eight to nine minutes. 
And I wanted to tell you that the reason I make my own English muffins is because these taste so much better than store-bought. When the muffins feel dry on top, as two of mine do, go ahead and remove the rings. They should slide right off, and they do. Now, I overfilled the four muffins over here, so we just have to wait a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and flip the two that are ready. You want to cook this other side for just four to five minutes. So I have flipped over all of the muffins. I wanted to tell you that the printable recipe for the English muffins and also for the baked oatmeal casserole will be on my website, kevinleejacobs.com. English muffins, my way. And I hope you will give these a try once these cool, I'm going to cut into one so you can see the nooks and crannies. So my muffins have cooled more or less to room temperature. So now I want to cut one open. I like to split the muffins with a fork. So these are fork split English muffins. And here we are. Look at all of the nooks and crannies. I'm going to toast this. My English muffin is toasted. Now watch this. A little butter. Now a little jam. The taste. You guys, this is not just good. It's really, really, really delicious. Well, we've had a very productive morning. We made the baked oatmeal and the breakfast freezer meals and English muffins. Let's take a break to play in the garden. Roses in the boxwood garden have finished their first flush of bloom. Later today, I will deadhead the spent flowers. Meanwhile, in the kitchen garden, the four butternut squash plants are beginning to climb their cattle panel trellises.
The leeks that you and I planted together are progressing very nicely. Two of the raised beds are planted with nearly 300 storage onions. The onions barely budged in June. Now in early July, their green tops are growing taller every day. The tomatoes are definitely happy. One of the plants is loaded with fruit. The lovage plant is nearly 10 feet tall now. I am taking a moment to cut it back to a more manageable size. The potatoes are flowering now. I can hardly wait until harvest time. My early season blueberries are beginning to ripen now. I hope to enjoy them before the birds do. In the herb garden, the carrots that you and I planted together back in April have filled their entire bed with beautiful fern-like foliage. The parsley has been exuberant this year. I use the leaves for healthy parsley salad. And in another bed, the French fillet beans are beginning to flower. This same bed contains bell peppers, parsnips, and celery. The celery is ready for harvest now. I'm very proud of the celery. Boy, it was really hot outside. It feels great to be back indoors and in air conditioning. I'm getting ready to make lunch. I'm going to make oven hamburgers. I learned this really cool oven technique from some obscure TV show about 10 years ago. It was a talk show and a woman made oven burgers. Take a baking sheet and line it with aluminum foil or parchment and then sprinkle the baking sheet with salt, any salt you like. Place a rack on the baking sheet. And I have four already formed hamburger patties here. And I should mention that my oven has preheated to 475 degrees Fahrenheit or 245 degrees Celsius. So then put the hamburger patties on the rack. You could certainly use a smaller baking sheet and a smaller rack for this job. I'm going to wash my hands quickly and then we will season up the hamburger. Salt and pepper. Now you would think that if I put these hamburger patties in a hot oven that they would spit and splatter and make a mess in the oven. But I've tried this technique and it works like a charm. There's no spitting, there's no splattering. That's because all of the grease goes into the salt. The salt immediately absorbs the grease. The oven stays clean. Also, there's no smell and there's no smoke. So I'm going to pop these into the oven for 15 minutes. Then I will take them out, add some cheese, put them back into the oven, for just five minutes. Now, if you want, you can put a slice of onion on a hamburger first and then put the cheese on top and then return the hamburgers to the oven for five minutes. 
or a little less than five minutes, depending on how well you want your hamburgers done. And I'm also going to add two of these English muffins. Aren't these beautiful? Here are the hamburgers. And the English muffins are good and hot. So I am building a very simple, very basic hamburger. Mayo. On the side, I'm having baby kale, thinly sliced cabbage, and thinly sliced Brussels sprouts. I want to show you how the fat from the hamburger seeped right into the salt. I think we should eat this in the serpentine garden. It's nice and shady here, and that sound you hear is a catbird. This hamburger is perfectly cooked. It's done, but it's not overdone. It's definitely juicy, and it's totally delicious. If you want hamburgers, but you don't feel like grilling or making a mess on your cooktop, try oven-cooked hamburgers. They're really wonderful. Thank you for spending time with me today. I really enjoyed your company in the kitchen and in the garden. Take good care of yourself and I will see you in the next video.